Okay, well, it's been almost two years since we've started this series, Newbie Introduction to Espresso. We've covered a lot of different topics during that time. We've covered a technique, we've covered taste, we've covered buying advice. One thing, though, we left out, though, and I really think we need to do before we wrap up this series is cover lever espresso machines. Uh, they're a different kind of espresso machine. The technique's a little bit different and it requires a little more technique. But now that you've had a lot more practice, mm -hmm. uh, I think you're going to find it a really fun and interesting way of exploring espresso. Ready for it. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> I hope. I should warn you up front is that uh, Lever Espresso fans out there, I know that they're a very particular bunch. There's a lot more technique, a lot more personality in mm -hmm. some respects gets injected into the technique. And thus, you know, there's always going to be disagreements. So right now I want to say right up front, what I'm presenting is one way of doing it. There mm -hmm. are other different ways. So the joke I always make is if you ask four Lever fans you know, how to do something, you'll get five different answers and six disagreements. Awesome. You know, so, so keep in mind, this is one way. Um, before we get started in the actual uh, mm -hmm. making espresso, mm -hmm. I want to cover some of the basics because uh, the way that they work is a little bit different uh, than when you might have been used to. Yep. Uh, so this one we have here is the Electra Microcasa Aleva. It is a spring type lever espresso machine. I'll explain that in just a sec. But a few uh, danger points, a few cautions. Uh, this one has an exposed boiler right here. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> Real hot. I know that term now. Very yeah. <laughs> with exposed, yeah, I got some marks. Yeah. You'll only make that mistake once. Uh, it has, this is a steam boiler, and thus the temperature is over 250 degrees. And so wow. you don't want to be touching this one. Yep. So if you have young children, for example, you might want to give thought before you get such a machine. Normally a machine has, you know, a casing around it and stuff like that. Lever machines, on the other hand, often have exposed boilers, so there's that to keep in mind. Uh, that heat will transfer all the way up to the top, and so when you take off the top, for example, definitely use uh, the handle there. Yep. Other things to keep in mind is, is that you know, this boiler is under pressure, and it fills manually. Thus, there's some cautions you have to take up. That means you have to make sure the boiler is depressurized completely before you remove the cap to refill the boiler. Gotcha. Okay. You can tell that by looking at this gauge right here. This gauge uh, will show you the steam pressure. Another thing to note is the sight level. This is called sight glass, and it tells you the level of the boiler water. Okay. So the heating element comes up to about here, and you don't want that exposed to air. It has to be immersed in water the entire time. Okay. Thus, unlike the other machines you've used, which you know, kept the boiler filled automatically, this one, it's on you, not to forget. Gotcha. So when we go to refill, remember to depressurize, very important, let it cool down. And let it cool down enough that when you add water, you don't shock the heating element and potentially damage it, you see? Mm -hmm. So again, these are, you'll see these are things that are a little bit different than the typical uh, pump-driven espresso machine, which has all these little safety mechanisms to keep you from you know, forgetting and stuff like this. This, sure. it's on you to remember. Sure. So with those little caveats, uh, let's, go ahead and get, uh, let's go ahead and get moving. So I mentioned before that this is a spring type uh, lever machine. Mm -hmm. and what that means is, is that here, you'll notice there is a chamber for filling the, the brew water. And then you have a lever which is pointing markedly up. That's because when it's in the up position, the spring is fully extended. Okay. When you push it down, what you're actually doing is you're compressing a spring. Okay. That when you then release, it's going to push the water out through the coffee and into the espresso cup, you see? Gotcha. One thing interesting about that is, is that uh, unlike a manual lever espresso machine, the springs type naturally have a declining profile. The brew pressure sure. will decrease as the mm -hmm. spring un unwinds. Just like a spring, it's under more pressure. When exactly, you yeah. correct. And what's nice about that is, is that uh, it really makes for an interesting, I, I think, you know, worth exploring sort of profile. So you can manually, in that case, you're using your arm to push it down mm -hmm. and generate the pressure. In this case, you're doing just the opposite. You're, you're cocking a spring in some respects, letting mm -hmm. that do it. So that's sort of the mechanics of, of the brew pressure itself. Another thing that is unique or common in lever espresso machines is temperature management tends to be more hands-on. 
Now this is where that, remember that technique part I was talking about mm -hmm. where people argue? Sure. This is where it often resides, that, that disagreement is how do you manage brew temperature? Mm -hmm. I'm going to demonstrate one technique. Uh, I call it the core cold portafilter technique. Okay. Because the brew temperature in other machines you've read, you've used, are mostly kind of like flush and then do sure. something, right? With this one, remember, super hot, mm -hmm. 250 odd degrees. The water that's coming into the brew temperature is coming directly from the steam boiler. So it's way over brew temperature, right? Uh, 250 odd degrees, right? Yeah. yeah. You might say, well, geez, isn't that going to make for a burnt espresso? Isn't it? That's what you think, right? Well, the idea is as the water, and it's called a dipper, as it makes up that dipper tube and into the brew chamber, mm -hmm. it's going to lose temperature as it goes through that, those channels, right? Okay. So by the time it reaches the group head, it kind of siphons off some of that heat sure. and ends up at the brew temperature. It's really a, a very cool design, right? Mm -hmm. So you say, so how do you, like, say, for example, you're making espresso. I want one to be cooler than it. How do you change that? Well, there's different techniques, and the one I've talked about, I called the cold portafilter technique, is you just take the portafilter before you start your prep time. Mm -hmm. You take the portafilter, let it sit in water for just a few seconds to cool down, and this one we're going to start, go ahead and make something. That cools it down out of room temperature. I lock it in, and so now put your finger in, you see that the portafilter is no longer hot, right? Right, right? But by the time you prepare your espresso, mm -hmm. it's going to be drawing heat out of that group head, mm -hmm. and thus it'll end up at the point where it'll have enough of a dampening effect on gotcha. the brew water. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, so, you know, if we said now, Philip has been at this now for two years, so he's really technically not a newbie when it comes to espresso machines, but he is you know, still new to levers. Sure. So what we're gonna do is, this time around, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the wheel over to you right away. Okay. Go ahead and prep the shot, and Great. I'll handle the lever part of it. Good. Okay, go All for right. it. Well, you've made it sort of easy on me. You've already pre-measured a, a couple cups for single dosing. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and pour the coffee into the basket. We use 14.5 grams. Already weighed it out. And then uh, same thing with the grinder. We have it set up just for a single dosing. So we'll put that in there. This is the Barazza Forte. Uh, it's, it's a model above the Vario. Kind of like the commercial version of the Vario. Okay. Um, and again, because we have this set up for single dosing, I'm just going to grind all the beans that are in there. And as it's grinding, it's going to be a little bit noisy for a while, but you'll notice I'm just going to be spinning the basket around just like this to get some uh, equal distribution. This is touch screen, so I'm going to put that under there. You notice it's a little bit faster than the Vario. It is a little quicker. Yeah. yeah. I like it. It's fancy too. Level it down. And then what I'm going to do is just smooth it out a little. I call that the stock flip move for dummies, by the way. That's kind of, you know. But the idea is, is to move the coffee grounds around the perimeter so you get an even distribution. That looks good. That looks good. All right. And then we'll tamp it down, hopefully nice and level. Now that basket, you've got a little bit of a slack in that tamper, almost like one or two millimeters. If you want to, you can do what, what's called fancy, a, a stob tamp, where you do more than one tamp, kind of gently to knock it off the sides. That's really a technique question. You know, we're not going to uh, you know, demand that, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Philip has prepped our basket, so we're ready now to the part which is a little bit different. Now, now touch that port filter. And now it's got some heat in it. It's got some, right? Yep. But it's not, you know, and this is where it's kind of like, uh, I use the analogy often of, of, of a car, an automatic versus a manual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the manual where you can use this as a quick indicator to tell you where am I, you know, because you're going to yeah, feel yeah. it warm up, right? So this one, if you feel that, you know, it's it's definitely warm to the touch, sure. but it's not, you know, you know, ouch level. Right. Which means, you know, if you, once you've done this for a while, this is about medium heat. Gotcha. So like with a lever machine like this, I tend to think of it as low, medium, and high. Yep. You see, so at high it means, you know, really, you don't even bother with this, this lock-in the portafilter thing. You just let it rip pretty much as it is. Now, quick question. I noticed the one different 
um, thing on this is this seems to, this is brass. Yes. And which the other ones I've used, I don't believe have been brass. Right. Good point. Uh, I forgot to note that is that this is not the stock port of filter that okay. comes with the machine. Okay. This is a bottomless that uh, that we had I had made. Okay. Uh, a guy sells them online. So you'll notice that it is made out of brass, so it's a little bit heavier. Okay. As a consequence, it can draw out more heat. Okay. So this technique I'm referring to, if you have the stock port of filter, yep. the time that it's going to take to draw down the heat, it's going to, you have to move a little bit faster uh, okay. because this one can draw out more heat. Mm -hmm. The stock one has less mass and thus, you know, you're going to sure. have to lock in, you're going to wait, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds. You can judge by touch yep. and then go for it. Where this is a little bit quicker if you use something in brass. Right, right. It can draw out more heat. Okay. So um, now back to the specifics of using the uh, spring lever. Go ahead and we popped out the uh, the uh, spring so we could drop the basket in very easily, right? I recommend that technique. One thing we can do then is is line up like this, and I haven't locked it in quite yet. You'll see I kind of just got to where the edge point. As I push down the lever, that's going to pull air into the chamber and then water will flow from the brew from the boiler, right? Okay. One technique you'll notice that starts to occur at about the midway point. You see, so you'll notice, yeah, I locked in late. Yep. Hear that hear that hissing sound? Yep. That's water coming in from the brew from the uh, steam boiler. Okay. Now, you know, you want to, I'm gonna let it, I let it pre-infuse probably a little bit longer than I normally would have. Normally I would let it go about six seconds. So I let it go, you know, about six seconds or so, and then slowly release the lever. And you can see the spring now is doing the rest of the work for me. Yep. So, well, that, that poured a teeny bit on the fast side, but not too bad. I think that was a, a really good, uh, good one. Now it's going to keep dripping for a while. One other uh, thing I didn't mention in the things to be wary of is that this doesn't have a three-way uh, pressure release valve. So that means like when you normally turn off like a pump, yeah, you, it's you hear yep. you know, water comes out, yep. right? That doesn't happen here. And so, you know, we kind of joke, they call it a portafilter sneeze if you <laughs> forget, right? <laughs> so you definitely want to give it a chance to depressurize on its own. Before you take that. If you don't, well, it's one of those things that you, everyone always makes a mistake at least once, yeah. you know, and they get a nice spray of coffee. Uh, yeah, you don't make it a, you make that mistake only once. There you go. Right, let's see. good. Is that? That's good. I've been without a machine for a while. So. <laughs> well, yeah, you haven't well, borrowed one in a while. That's good. That's good. One thing I've been saying is, is that in preparing for this uh, video, I had forgotten how great the espressos were from, mm. from this, you know, this small machine. It really packs a, a really good layered, a lot of clarity. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the same body mm -hmm. as you would expect from a pump machine, but it has a lot of compensating factors that make up for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last few things before we finish. I mentioned about the portafilter sneeze. One way also to help that along is that, notice I'll push it down a little bit. That draws air into the chamber, but doesn't add water. So when I release this, I'm guaranteed there's no room for pressure, you see? Okay, and then you can see the little bit of water come back up. Right, nice. right. And so, and before you make your next shot, what you can do is, is you can draw a little water. Okay, that will clean the screen. Yep. And then you can go ahead and, you know, we'll knock out our puck, and like there, set this up for the next one. Gotcha. You see, and so we would just uh, take a towel here, dry that off, and if you can make a really fast one for me, sure. we'll de demonstrate one last technique, right. and we'll be done. You can see while he's doing that, you can see that I've been practicing this in the best. The sight level is almost at the half, below the halfway mark. Mm -hmm. So we've got enough for about two or three, maybe four espressos, but you want to pay attention to that. Don't want that to get all the way down. No, 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 no. You want, it has to be at about uh, the third of the boiler full. Gotcha. So I went ahead and you know I pulled that off and let, let it lock back in okay. to warm back up. That's drawing the heat out of the group head, so it'll be hopefully at the correct brew temperature when it reaches the puck.
that takes, you know, on the order of this, for this particular port filter, it's about 30 seconds. This might actually be a little bit quick, but that's fine. We'll, we'll deal with that for this time. And now when you put water back in that tank, in order to let the pressure come down, does it need to be at zero all the way to zero? Or? Right. Um, we are, we aren't going to demonstrate latte art this time, mm -hmm. but keep in mind that this one, you know, this is one thing great about lever espresso machines is they can make a cappuccino and brew espresso at the same time. So, you know, right here, uh, you can... Oh, well, that's a great way to relieve the pressure. Right. Okay. And so you can always, if you're, if you have, when in doubt, yeah. you know, open up this valve and when absolutely nothing comes out, you know it's depressurized. Okay. But again, remember to let it cool down a bit. If you dump cold water onto a hot heating element, yeah. you may damage it. Okay. So it realistically, you know, these machines are fantastic for one or two people, mm -hmm. you know, to make a cappuccino mm -hmm. espresso, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's not really meant for a crowd. You know, it's, it's really, not, there are lever, commercial lever espresso machines, mm -hmm. which are meant for continuous use. Mm -hmm. This isn't one of those cases. Yep. Okay, so let's go ahead and demonstrate one last thing. Now this one, I always kind of laugh at. The name of this is called a Fellini move. You know, like, you know, like whoa, <laughs> what's up with that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I think it was after the name of a, of a guy in a movie or something like that. It okay. was demonstrated in a video. And what it does is, is that normally you notice I pushed down the lever, mm -hmm. I released, and just drew down one shot. Mm -hmm. End of story, right? What you can do in a Fellini move is, is that you'll notice the volume of that espresso was really low. It was a really tight ristretto, right? Mm -hmm. But say you want a fuller espresso. Okay. What you can do is, is that you can let it go about halfway down and then re-cock it. So you cock it, it's kind of like a one and a half cocks. Interesting. So you're filling the boiler. Now there's a trade-off mm -hmm. because if you re-cock it, you're you know, kind of drawing you know, water up through the puck again. Sure. So it fractures the puck a little bit. Uh -huh, okay. So it's a trade-off. You're going to get a fuller espresso, but it's going to be, you know, it's going to have a little bit of channeling. Gotcha. So it's a trade-off. But like if you're making a cappuccino, for example, mm -hmm. you might be willing to say, well, I want to have more volume, more punch. Yep. So I'm willing to make that trade-off. Gotcha. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Okay. So one more time, pull out pour filter and you see now, put your finger there. It's pretty warm, okay. right? Yep. So there you go. Put that in. Lock in. Now I just lightly lock in, push down, lock in the rest of the way, pre-infuse, and then release gently. Okay. And here's the Fellini part. It's gone about, uh, you know, not quite halfway. Mm -hmm. I, I stop it midway, bring it back up a second time, let it fill, and then let it continue. And you notice how much faster yeah. it moved the second time. The volume. Yeah. Well, but you know, now I'm going to end up with really a full shot, really full. And you'll see I even cut it off, yeah, right? Yep. But you see now look at the volume that this time. Sure. Give that a taste. And you're gonna see that, you know, the profile, taste profile is gonna change. But it's a trade-off that in a cappuccino is, might be worth doing. Definitely different. So how's it different? I'm just curious. Um, it's not as strong. Right, yeah. right. You so it taste it immediately. Right, well the other one, remember we talked about the taste test, the test of thirds, remember yeah. that? Yep. Yeah. When you make it the regular way, or when you make it with this way, it's going to tend to emphasize that last third more because of that channeling effect. Right. But, you know, some people, it's, a, it's another example of what I was talking about where there's controversy in the lever espresso thing. Mm -hmm. Is that some people will use this technique, others won't. Mm -hmm. um, you should really get used to experimenting, and that's really the, the beauty of uh, levers is, is that you can personalize the routine to what works for you. Yep. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, any uh, any updates, any questions? Uh, we haven't given you any, you haven't heard an update. What is going on with you? Uh, just, um, yeah, things going well. Yeah? Things good. And, uh, works good. And, uh, you had a withdrawal, though, of espresso for a while, though, didn't I did. you? I did. I did, yeah. With, without a machine for, gosh, almost a month. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's and, pretty sad. Uh, the, uh, the Keurig had to come back out. Yep, and okay. uh, oh yeah, yep. Uh, drip coffee, got a French press I'll use every once in a while, but uh, I've definitely been uh, excited about getting another machine, and especially something like this, it's very different and more, now that I have a good grasp of everything, can have an idea of how to sort of customize it. So. That's one thing I think that Lever fans will definitely appreciate, is that and it's a Lever espresso machine, you, you develop a technique that really works for you, mm -hmm. and it helps if you have some experience, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So 
Uh, there's I don't think I'd enjoy this in the very beginning. Right. <laughs> there's there's more variables, and variables can be a good thing and a bad yeah. thing. You know, they're they're fun when you know how to manipulate them, and they're, they can be frustrating if you don't. Absolutely. So uh, you know, go ahead, give it a try, and uh, maybe we'll hear back from you again. Definitely. So Definitely. there we are. Uh, one more episode of newbie introduction to in, newbie introduction to espresso. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the forum. Thanks again, Philip. Thanks.